Hey everyone, if you're interested in rendering ambient occlusion or depth passes in Unreal Engine, this tutorial is exactly what you need. Since Unreal doesn't offer a direct way to do this for the movie render queue alone, I'll show you a reliable method to achieve these passes. Now feel free to check out my previous tutorial that shows how to enable and use ambient occlusion in Unreal Engine 5. Since uh, UE5's release, traditional ambient occlusion has been disabled by default, as Epic has shifted towards using Lumen's approach for calculating ambient light. That tutorial will give you a good foundation before we dive into rendering these custom paces, so just have a look in the description below. Here we have an example scene in Unreal Engine, which we'll use as the base of our work. The first step is to create a new material. After creating it, we'll open the material editor and set the material domain to post process. This allows us to use it with our post process volume. Note that only the emissive color is available when the material is set to post process. This material that we just created will be added to our post process volume later. First, we start with the scene texture ambient occlusion node. This node grabs the ambient occlusion information from the scene, gives us a starting point for our effect. Next is the feature level switch node. To ensure consistency, we use a constant node set to a value of 1 as a baseline intensity. This keeps our AO effect predictable and easy to work with. This node ensures that the material is compatible across different shader models like ES2 or ES3-1. It's an essential step for maintaining functionality across various platforms. Now, we adjust the AO values using a subtract node set to 0.5. This centers the ambient occlusion data around 0, making it easier to manipulate contrast and achieve the desired effect. The multiply node allows where we multiply the adjusted AO data by a contrast parameter, which is set to 1. This enhances the difference between light and dark areas in the amb ambient occlusion, letting us amplify or tone down the effect. The contrast parameter provides fine-tuning control over this enhancement. After adjusting contrast, we use an add node with a value of 0.5 to bring the ambient occlusion value back into a proper range. This step ensures the data remains usable for the next stages of processing. To give artists even more flexibility, we include a contrast bias parameter set to 0.0, .0 by default. This allows for traditional, for additional tweaking of the AO intensity, offering control over how prominent the darkening effect appears in the final render. Finally, all the adjusted values are combined using an add node and the result is connected to the emissive color. This is how post-process materials apply their effects to the final image in Unreal Engine. Now, let's head back to the Unreal Engine viewport. We'll start by creating a material instance from our post-process material that we made earlier. Select your post-process volume in the viewport and scroll down to find the post-process material section. Click the plus button to add a new material, change it to an asset reference and plug in the material instance we just created. The post-process can be toggled by switching between 0 and 1. You'll notice we have controls for ambient occlusion intensity and radius right here as well. However, to get this working properly, we need to input specific console commands, which you'll find in the description below. The console commands are r.lumen.screenprobegather.shortrange AO0. This disables Lumen's built-in short-range ambient occlusion calculation, which handles close-range shadowing between nearby surfaces. And then the other one, r. That, dot, sorry, Lumen .diffuse indirect SSO one which enables screen space ambient occlusion as a supplement to, to Lumen's indirect lighting calculations, which can help enhance contact shadows and local details. Once those commands are in, you'll see the ambient occlusion taking effect in your scene. You can also switch to the ambient occlusion buffer visualization to see exactly how it's affecting your world after setting up the post-process material and enabling ambient occlusion through the console commands. Let's fine-tune our post-process material settings. The radius controls the sharpness of the effect. Lower values create a sharper ambient occlusion, while higher values reduce the contrast. The intensity adjusts how strong the overall effect is. It's all about finding the right balance for your scene.
for even more control, open up the material instance we created. Uh, and here you'll find additional parameters like ambient occlusion contrast and the ambient occlusion contrast bias. These work well at their default values, but feel free to adjust them to your needs. As you move through your scene, you can see how the ambient occlusion affects every crevice and corner, creating natural shadowing that doesn't rely on lumens calculations. Let's create a level sequence and we'll name it all LS Tutorial. Inside the sequence, we can create a camera directly, and this will be our main camera for viewing and rendering the ambient occlusion pass. Now, before we continue, we need to make sure that the Movie Render Queue plugin is enabled in our plugin menu, because without this, we won't have access to the rendering options we need. Once enabled, you'll see the Render Movie as Movie Render Queue. You'll see this as an option in your sequence. In the Movie Render Queue, we can set up different output configurations. First, we'll add a console variable node. Uh, this is where we'll input the two console commands I showed you earlier. And adding these console commands here is crucial. It ensures that they're active during the rendering process, as the system won't automatically apply them otherwise. After setting this up, click Accept. And now you'll need to specify an output directory for your renders. You can choose any location you prefer. Once your output path is set, you're ready to start rendering by clicking the Render Local button. The system will compile some shaders first and then begin to render. You should start seeing the same ambient occlusion paths that we were viewing in the viewport. And there you have it. You can see the final image being generated with a proper ambient occlusion pass. If you're enjoying our content, please feel free to have a look at my Patreon. We offer all the projects over there, uh, including the CloudForge, AtmosForge, the upcoming WorldForge, and so on. There's plenty of space-related tutorials and, and all sorts of assets on there as well for Unreal Engine and Blender. So yeah, if you want to, you know, for the price of a coffee, you can get access to all of that. There's probably about 30 projects, I think, in there right now. Um, all of them coming with their own sort of like options, tutorials, and all sorts of lessons as well. And all the assets are for you to use in your own projects as well. So you get like a, a professional license if you get them. So yeah, have a look and um, yeah, let's get back to the video. Thank you for watching. Now for the depth task, we will have, have a similar approach by first creating our material. Now, let's break down this scene depth visualization material. The core of this setup starts with our scene depth texture node. This is what captures all the depth information from our scene. We then process this depth information through several mathematical operations. Uh, you know, first we multiply our depth values by a very small number, 0 0.0001 in this case. This helps us scale down the depth values to something more manageable. We're also using a divide node with a falloff parameter set to 2. Think that this is a control for how aggressively our depth transitions appear. If you increase this value, you'll get more pronounced depth transitions and lowering it and, you know, lowering it and the transitions become more subtle. The uh, FRAC node that is pr uh, particularly interesting because it takes our pr process depth values and gives us just a fractional part. Combined with our constant value of 1, this creates a repeating pattern based on depth, which helps normalize our output. Just like our previous materials, we're using a feature level switch to ensure compatibility across different platforms and shader models. Finally, all of this gets, out, gets output to the emissive color, giving us a uh, grayscale visualization where we can clearly see how depth changes throughout our scene. This is incredibly useful for both debugging and artistic purposes, as it lets us see exactly how depth is being interpre interpreted in our environment.
And that concludes our tutorial. Really appreciate you taking the time to watch my video. Thank you to my Patreons and supporters on YouTube and Discord. Leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and let me know what topics you would like to look at in the future. Keep creating and keep watching, and I'll see you guys uh, soon.